you're looking to add some more interest to your terrain pieces with color variation, check out this video. Hey, welcome back to Tangible Day. I've been working on terrain pieces lately, but they end up being a bit too flat. And so I thought, why not try using watercolor paints to add some color variation? Here, I'll show you what I did. Here's a piece of terrain I painted. It looks pretty decent, but I want to add a bit of a jungle vibe to it. But I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, and I just want to relax. I know that watercolors are great because you don't have to put a lot of effort into using them, just water and a bit of imagination. This set I found on Amazon for about $30, using a fairly large brush, pointed round number four. And I'm looking at this miniature and I'm thinking about where I should put this color. And then I realize using watercolor doesn't really matter because you can always wash it off later. And in my mind, I'm just trying to relax and think about what if this piece of stone ruin was sitting in a humid tropical jungle for hundreds of years. Where would this green fungi and moss grow? That would probably be where it wasn't exposed to direct sunlight, where moisture would build up. The really cool thing about watercolors, again, is you really can't mess it up. You can wash it off. And just for color variation, I'm choosing the two different greens that came with the set, this dark green and this bright green. And as you notice, I'm using it directly from the palette. I'm not really using a dry palette at all, just wetting my brush in the water and gathering up some of that pigment I did find this reference image online just to give me a sense of the kind of color and that variation I'm looking for. It's a bit too intense right now, that color. Too much green, I think. And so I'm thinking to myself, what else can I add to balance out all that green? Maybe a brown, a little bit of red. Because we all know that mildew, moss, and foliage isn't just pure green. There's, there's a lot of variation in there. And all I'm doing is dabbing it around randomly, just pretending in my brain, just imagining where things would grow. And right now I know when I'm doing this that I think I'm putting too much color on. But again, I'm using watercolor and I know later I can wash it off or tone it down using a clean damp brush, which I'll show you in a second. So here we are, I have a, a brush here that's clean and fairly fairly dry and I'm pulling pigment off. You can just rub it off. Watercolor doesn't stick around very well. And you can use that to your advantage. Again, I'm just feathering in the edges, trying to get rid of that excess pigment that I'm thinking in my head might be too much. It does build up in the recesses, just wiping off the pigment on the paper towel. And I do this over the entire model in sections. There isn't really a formula to this. You do get into a kind of a flow, and I'll show you in a second as I speed this up how I'm working. It's kind of like reverse dry brushing. You're taking pigment off of the raised areas and leaving it in the recesses, and all I'm using is a little bit of water just to reactivate that dried watercolor pigment, and it comes right off. And so you can really just play around with color variation. I think the challenge too is knowing when to stop. Here I'm just reassessing what I've done I like how it's turned out so far. Just a little bit of subtle color in the recesses where moss would might grow. There's some browns in there where dirt might build up at the edges there, at the bottom. Now, of course, I'm thinking to myself, should I push it a little further? And so I take a big brush and I'm playing now. Add some yellow, why not? Brown, let's put in a little more color here and push in that contrast a bit at the bottom where the moisture might build up on the stone here on this ruin. You can see me damping, dampening the brush on that wet paper towel. Just to feather in some of that color, I'm blending it down into the stone. This doesn't take very long at all. On large models, this is a great way to add that extra bit of interest without a lot of effort. And you can see me adding a little bit of black watercolor pigment to push the contrast underneath those, 
those areas of the piece. Now I'm also thinking to myself, some of these cracks need to be a bit darker. There's a buildup of dirt, mildew maybe, I don't know. And so I add some watercolor to them, some black watercolor. Black watercolor paint's amazing for panel lining, by the way, dark lining things, super easy. Now I'm also adding color to the rest of the piece and I'm just messing around. Now I have this bluish teal watercolor paint, just poking it into those places where things might grow. I'll speed it up so you can get a sense of what I'm doing. You already know what I'm doing at this point. Wow, I went nuts with the orange there. Now I'm taking it all out because I think I went a bit too far. I think it's really important you take a step back and examine your work whenever you're using this kind of technique. A lot of this is just add color, take it away, take a step back, reassess. Here I'm just using a cosmetic sponge to clean off the raised edges a bit. I don't want too much color. I want it to be a bit subtle. I don't want to overdo it. You may want more color. You may want less color. There might be happy accidents along the way, places where you like things how they turned out, and you keep it. I hope this was inspirational for you. It might be a new technique for you to try. For this piece, I think I'm done for now. I'd love to know what you think. Leave me a comment below.